Now we're going to talk about uh, lawfare now, which is um, something that's silencing many people who who we need to hear um, more from. Legal threats to people are really tying people up in knots. And I'm just going to show a short clip uh, with Yanis Varoufakis talking about this. There are many ways to lose one's democracy. The judicial road to authoritarianism is perhaps the most pernicious. Today, the same tactic is being used in the United Kingdom to neutralize Jeremy Corbyn, to ensure that his recent, passionate, splendid case for a better, more decent world is kept out of the next general election, out of Britain's next parliament. A bit of history. Jeremy was sued for comments he made in 2018. In 2022, just three weeks before the trial was due to commence, the case was dropped vindicating Jeremy fully. Still, that left Jeremy with a bill of £1,477,000. Many small donations and subsequent negotiations helped to reduce that sum substantially. Nevertheless, still today, Jeremy is left with a bill of £400,000. The powers that be know that Jeremy is not like them. Jeremy Corbyn has not stored up treasures by cozying up to bankers, company directors, conglomerates, the oligarchy, without extraordinary personal wealth. No one could meet a bill like this, which is, of course, the de facto ulterior motive behind this absurd affair to prevent Jeremy's political participation by tying him up in legal cases and financial difficulty and to intimidate others like him into silence and submission. Uh, we're joined by uh, Pamela Fitzpatrick. Could you elaborate a bit on the on the situation um, that that's, that Jeremy Corbyn's involved in? Because it, it seems like he, this case against him was dropped, and then he's still got these legal fees. I mean, is that is that always what happens? No, it's not normally the case. Usually, if you win, then uh, the costs are borne by the other side. But this case was dropped, and it's probably been agreed agreed with the court that this is how the costs will be spread. It does seem an inordinate amount of money, though. I mean, it wouldn't normally be that amount, but it's still vastly beyond most people's reach. I mean, lawfare is not a new thing. And also the legal system being the kind of, you know, plaything of the wealthy is also not new. Most people can't access justice because of the lack of legal aid. So if you think about women who are in the process of divorce and have an abusive partner, they often cannot get legal aid because it's been cut completely for family law, the same with welfare benefits. But on this, the kind of what's happening with Jeremy, he's been left with huge costs, even though he didn't bring the case, it was somebody who took a case against him. He's been found to have done nothing wrong and he's still left with these huge costs, which nobody, ordinary person, could meet. And what it does, it acts as a deterrent to anybody becoming engaged in kind of the legal process. But also it acts as a deterrent to people to speak out because they're worried that those with more money who can afford to use the courts will be able to do so. So it is a much bigger problem than just what's happening in the Labour Party. And you've had, for example, you've seen where ex-members of staff have been sued by the Labour Party mm. because the Labour Party have been sued by other people. And even though report after report shows that those people had no involvement in what they're being sued for, the party is still persisting. And if you can imagine the stress that that places people under. I mean, I work in a law centre. It's all about kind of helping people access justice. And I know the kind of inequality that exists within the legal system. But to be it's, be it for it to be used to attack our democratic process, it really is a worry. And that's happening more and more. And it's happening in the Labour Party, threatened that if you bring a case against them, they will pursue costs against you as a member, even if you win. Now, is that going to be applied to the uh, people who are on the right, who are suing the Labour Party, one of whom apparently has been elected as a local councillor recently? We know that it'll be used to target certain people and not others. 
So I suppose with Jeremy's case, it is rather unique. It's a huge amount of costs. It wouldn't normally be that. But you are talking about, you know, a few hundred thousand that you'd have to be prepared to lose if you went to court with, a, say, a judicial review. So throughout my time with the Labour Party and the things that I've been through, people would say to me all the time, Pamela, you need to sue them. You need to sue yeah. them for defamation. Only the very rich can really do that because there is no legal aid. And if you think about in the past, when legal aid was established, about 80% of the population would qualify for it. And now it's probably a, about 20%. So it's 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 really, there's a real inequality, which I'm sure Jeffrey will be able to talk about far you know, better. Uh, th thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, Jeffrey, um, I'm, I'm just wondering, what, can you tell us the history of the legal aid? I mean, would that have been the case before the... the, the uh, the changes to the legal aid system that the, the Conservatives introduced. Would Jeremy be in this situation? Uh, it, 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 could, it could have happened because uh, the, um, the, the basic rule uh, and, and the problem which, uh, which I think really is underlying this is, the, um, is that the, the winner takes all in, 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 in a libel case. The winner, the winner gets gets all, all his, his costs paid by the loser. So the threat of losing a libel case is, is enormous because potentially you're liable for the costs of the other side. Now, what seems to have happened here in, in uh, Jeremy's case, although I, I have no detailed knowledge of it, is that it, it was not uh, a total victory for, for Jeremy in the sense that the... the um, the people suing him didn't back down totally and withdraw. A settlement was reached, uh, which involved dropping the allegations, but left the issue of costs uh, with Jeremy still having to fund his own costs. He, they did the, the 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 people who withdrew, the people suing him, withdrawing, did not, as would normally happen if they had lost. They didn't have to pay Jeremy's costs because the, there was an agreement. Now that agreement presumably was on the basis that uh, there was still some risk to Jeremy in going on. It was in his overall interest to settle the case and get rid of it, rather than allow it to continue and run up more and more costs. So uh, it's not quite as simple as uh, as uh, uh, as it sounds, and. Um, but there is a liability there, and a lot of this, as I say, comes down to the fact that in a in a defamation case, certainly, and and in other some other cases as well, the the, the burden is really on the person who is sued to put up a, to, to 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 justify rather than than on the on the person who makes the claim, wow. and and the, the risk. Of the of the loser having to pay the winner's cost is so enormous in some cases that people can't take the risk of defending themselves, even though they have a good case. And and like Pamela was saying as well, that the, the this idea that people often say, "Well, just sue them, just sue them, so keep so, you know sue them." They've said something. I mean, it, it's not the way to to do it, is it? It's not possible to keep yes. suing people for for libel, is it? Well, in libel cases, there are there are two there are two problems. One is the, the problem of, of costs that we've been talking about. And the other is that in a libel case, uh, if the words that are used that are that are complained about are defamatory, that's to say, if they're uh, untrue and damaging. Then the burden on is on the defendant, the burden on the person sued who has to justify the words that have been used. Now that can be very difficult, very expensive, and very uncertain. So, so uh, the, 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 it's it's much easier for the the, the claimant to sue than for the defendant to defend. And what you've got now, I'm not saying that Jeremy's case is an example of this, but you are getting now uh, some of the Russian oligarchs and other people, rich people, 
are trying to suppress damaging information about them, which may, may be true or may not be true, but they're trying to suppress uh, what may be ordinary journalistic investigations by the threat of the enormous costs that can fall on the defendant. So, so this is this is really the problem. This is what is being called lawfare, is using the law to suppress uh, genuine uh, public interest uh, information, journalism, uh, by the threat of the person who uh, re re reveals this information being bankrupted or being put to enormous expense. Right. Uh, pa Pamela, with, with, um, with this lawfare, I mean, to, to, is this something that should be uh, put as a priority to, to uh, as a change to the law? We should change it so that this doesn't happen. Is it is it politically motivated? Uh, well, the irony is that Boris Johnson, when Prime Minister was speaking out about exactly the point that Jeffrey has just made about journalists being prevented from investigating because of kind of you know, Russian oligarchs and others. Um, stopping them. I mean, you'd have to go to the heart of the legal system. So I saw somebody just put up, why are solicitors allowed to charge so much? It's extortionate, 250 pounds an hour. Well, most solicitors working in the field of social welfare, legal aid, whatever, get paid probably just 50 pounds an hour. It's yeah. not, you know, this myth about solicitors being really wealthy, they're not. The only solicitors that are wealthy are the ones that work in corporate law, it's not, you know, people who work in private practice in firms that do legal aid are not, you know, getting loads of money. They really don't. Um, so just need to sort of nip that in the bud. But there's been an attack on legal aid, not just by the Tories in 2013, where they savagely cut legal aid. There's been no increase in legal aid for decades. So people, you'll get barristers, criminal barristers, um, are earning about 12,500 pounds a year that's junior barristers and when we're talking about junior barristers we mean people who are kind of you know fairly experienced still so you'd have to start with what's going wrong in the in the justice system both criminal and civil you'd need to put money into it you'd need to ensure that people have access to legal aid for a far greater range of subjects than is going on because otherwise you will always have wealthy people being able to utilize the justice system and mm. poor people unable to defend themselves whether it's on these types of lawfare or anything else but there's no commitment to do that and can you imagine a government increasing the possibility of people being able to scrutinize what they're doing by judicial review. There's always successive governments have tried to stop that. So you have barriers in place. So let's take a private practice firm who are going to charge you 250 pounds an hour to go to judicial review. You, there's legal aid available for that, but if you don't get permission to go to judicial review, you don't get any payment from the legal aid fund. So it's, it's a fundamental change that is needed within our justice system to make it accessible to everybody. But the reality is that successive governments do not want that. So lawfare, you know, you would hope that a democratic party like the Labour Party would be against the use of lawfare, but they're doing it themselves in trying to silence members by threats that we will pursue you for costs, even if you win the case. You know, how can that be right in a democratic party? Um, and it is ironic in the extreme that you had Boris Johnson speaking out against these um, this law use of lawfare. So, yes, we need to get people dispel the myths about lawyers because that's promoted in the interests of governments who try to talk about fat cat lawyers, lefty lawyers, activist lawyers. Most lawyers get ordinary salaries and the payments that you make of whatever to private practice have to pay for a whole range of things like office, secretarial, all sorts of things. So get away from that notion. What we have to think about is how do we open up the justice system to everybody? And obviously that doesn't mean that anybody can bring kind of vexatious claims because you will have those scrutinized and filtered out through that process. But we have to have a different system than we've got now because it's not just about 
this uh, lawfare. It's the whole justice system, as I said, about women having to appear in court with abusive men who are represented by lawyers. The women don't have them. People going out without their benefits, people who can't sue their landlord for disrepair to get repairs done because of the cuts to legal aid there. There's a whole mm. range of things. So we need to get that on the agenda far more and move away from the myth that of fat cat lawyers because it's just not true, other than a few corporate lawyers in the city. But they, you know, they're never attacked, are they? We never hear, oh, isn't it terrible these corporate lawyers working for these big companies and getting paid lots of money? It's always the people who are working in kind of access to justice who are attacked. Now, uh, just to, to finish, Je Je Jeffrey, I'm just wondering because uh, Keir Starmer was a, a leading uh, lawyer. Yes. Um, would you not think it would make sense for him to see the problems with the legal system and to address well, them? I, I, I must say, it's 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 puzzled me for a long time that um, Keir hasn't taken a, 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 a much stronger position uh, on the law and the legal system for some reason, and this relates in particular to the. The, the cases involving the Labour Party itself, which were, were mentioned earlier, that um, the, the Labour Party seems to have spent an enormous amount of money on, on spewing and, and, uh, and defending cases. And um, the, 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 uh, the Labour Party itself has pursued a number of people claiming anti-Semitism by Jewish people and to a very large extent um, because they have criticized the conduct of the government of Israel and the treatment of Palestinians. And uh, I mean, I personally regard that as, as disgraceful. Uh, and, and, I'm, and, and I'm dismayed by the fact that Keir, uh, although I, I I'd be surprised if he was personally involved in any, in any of those decisions on this. Um, I, I do feel he should he should have, should be taking a stronger position on that. 